the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are celebrating the transfiguration of our Lord today, and Patty started this out beautifully with that beautiful Savior that is something I hope you embrace and appreciate so much today as we go through our worship service. Welcome to those worshiping online and uh, will soon be by radio. And you are all an important part of our Good Hope family as we uh, celebrate our annual meeting today following the service immediately in the auditorium. And if you have your annual report that you took with you and brought back, you get an extra pat on the back, but if you need one, we have extra out here on the narthex. Please take one with you and read through them. Our office staff does a fantastic job, and I hope you uh, take time to thank them for putting that all together, as well as all of the, the committees and the council members who made the reports. Uh, Sunday School for All Ages begins next Sunday at 9.30. I will be offering a class in the auditorium, and it will go along with our Lenten theme, so I invite you to come with that um, so we can um, move together towards that beautiful Easter morning. Uh, as always, our protocols will be followed. Wednesday starts the Lenten season. Uh, Ash Wednesday will be celebrated here in our worship at 7 p.m. We will have the imposition of ashes as well as Holy Communion. At, God willing, with this snow at 11.30 to 12, we, I will be in the parking lot across the way. Find me between the snowdrifts, and I will be putting a blessing and ashes on your head there. Uh, please share that with anyone that you know that would enjoy that experience and be a witness to Christ on this Ash Wednesday. That is what the imposition of ashes is reminding us of, that we are all children of God. Uh, we invite you to make Wednesdays uh, uh, on your calendar a place to come here for worship. I believe in short evening services because I know you have busy lives, but it is so important to put that in your schedule. Uh, that intentional worship in Lenten season really helps us understand our call in life. So it starts at 7 p.m., and uh, every Wednesday we will be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion. We still need all the flowers for February 28th and most of March. And next Sunday we will install our new council members at both services. Uh, if you would also like to donate communion elements, you will see our new uh, way of elements today. It's in a little chalice. It's a little easier to open. We're always looking for new ways to make uh, the experience of Holy Communion more sacred. Uh, if we at all can make that possible, because God already does. The Welcome Board will not meet on February 17th. And as always, the office is here to serve you. Uh, please feel free to call or email us. We're always checking that. We're still following safety protocols. And I'm always here and available for you. I just returned uh, yesterday from my week of seminary classes. It was a wonderful experience, and I know that when I go there, I'm taking you with me. Uh, that partnership is so very valuable to me, and uh, I will share with you everything I know, and I learned a lot this week, so be ready to listen. <laughs> and with that thought in mind, let us begin our worship today with the confession and forgiveness. Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins through the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, 
for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Let's sing joyfully, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Comfort and defend. 
Defend us, gracious Lord. Let us now pray our prayer for the day. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'd ask any children to come up and join me, as well as Lily. <laughs> well, good morning. Do you see there are some signs here that you don't normally see? What do you see here? you know what that word is? Alleluia. When do you say alleluia? Anybody. When things are good, you say alleluia, this is wonderful. Well, today, that is exactly what the church is doing. We are saying alleluia. We know who Jesus is. Today is that revealing of his identity that we have no doubt. And so, in the Lutheran faith, we practice bearing the Alleluias. Now, it's a very old custom. But before we do that, do we know what's coming up Wednesday? Do you know what the season of church is? What do you think it is? It's Ash Wednesday, and it starts the season of Lent, which means it's the time to really focus on how important it is to repent of old ways and try to live the way God wants us to do. Now, there's a lot of thought about that, that it's dark, and it, it seems kind of lonely and miserable, but actually it's the most wonderful time to be a Christian because it's leaving room inside of yourself to let go or give up some things that distract you from God and keep you focused on what God is leading us to, which is that glorious resurrection day. So on Tuesday... It's called Shrove Tuesday, or sometimes people call it Fat Tuesday. You see it celebrated, and can you pass one down to everybody? Uh, these are the days people celebrate big time, and they empty their houses of all the sugar and oil. That's why we always have pancakes on Tuesday. And you're, okay? And this means you celebrate. And then on Wednesday, we bear... We, start to walk to the cross, and we bury the Alleluia. Now, this helps you understand why you hunt Easter eggs as well, because when you're burying the Alleluias on Easter morning is when you go look for all the eggs around, 
And it's a wonderful thing when you find him, just like it was wonderful for Jesus to be out of the tomb and resurrected. So we are going to have some fun. I've asked Lily, who was just confirmed this past year here, to be the official Alleluia person that hides it. So she is going to take this, see the little gold thing? This is what you're going to be looking for on Easter morning. And she will hide it somewhere here in the sanctuary. Only Lily will know where it's at. But on Easter morning, we can't wait to get here to find the Alleluia. And whoever finds it gets to carry it down the aisle that day. Now that might not sound like a lot of fun, but it's a real big honor. So I'd like you to think of it that way and look for the Alleluia. So I'm going to give this to Lily and I'm going to need some help. I've got two up here because we have uh, two services today. So could I ask all of you to come over here and help me fold this up and we're going to bury it. Okay, everybody take a corner. Come on over here, Abby. Okay, and let's fold it together. Fold it up. Fold it in the center here. Okay, can we fold it even closer? Smaller so it can fit in there. One more thing. You want to try to roll it up. Even more. Yep, keep on going. <laughs> Here, everybody grab one and, and let's just, we can just roll it up like this. All right, you got it? Okay, let's see if Lily can fit it in there. You, can you fit it in there, Lily? I'll just give it to you and let you try to shove it in there. And so when will we find it? On Easter morning. And so during this time, we are supposed to be really leaving some room to let that alleluia be the part of our life. All right, thank you. And as they walk back to their um, seats, let us all say the prayer of, of thanking God for this opportunity. Repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for revealing your identity to us today. May we intentionally walk to the cross and be filled with the alleluia of knowing our resurrection with you. <laughs> In your holy name we pray, amen. Please stand for the gospel. The gospel comes from St. Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, and they led up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make these three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Holy Gospel. Praise be to Christ. Amen. You may be seated.
As I walked through the door, I sensed his presence. And uh, I knew this was the place where love abounds. For this is the temple Jehovah God abides here. And we are standing here his presence on holy ground. We are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all around let us praise Jesus now we are standing in his presence on holy ground In his presence there is joy beyond all measure. And at his feet sweet peace of mind can still be found. If you have a need, I know that he has the answer. Just reach out and claim it, for you are standing on holy ground. We are standing holy ground and I know that there are angels all around <clears throat> let it talk us praise Jesus now standing in his presence on holy ground. We are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all around let us praise Jesus now we are standing in his presence we are standing in his presence we are standing in his presence on holy ground. Holy ground. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I asked Mike to sing that beautiful song, that holy ground that we are standing on, and God never disappoints. He always shows up. As I sat there and listened to that beautiful music, I looked at our stained glass windows, 
and the light of God is shining in on us, through us, with promise and hope. Today is a pivotal day in the church calendar. And I love the church calendar. I, I encourage all of you to get to know it better. It's why the different colors on the altars are changing. It's a wonderful way to live your life centered on what the church calendar year is telling us. Martin Luther said it's the pivotal day of when we leave the season of light that we call Epiphany, the season of the birth celebration of Jesus, of the baptism and the beginning of his ministry, and turning towards that season of darkness that leads us to the suffering and crucifixion of our Savior on the cross into that glorious Sunday, resurrection day of Easter, and then on to ascension. It is the very foundation of the Christian belief, and it all goes together. And as we walk to the cross together in these next 40 days of Lent, it's important that we understand why we are doing it. You know, so many times we talk about giving up things for Lent, and actually what the story is telling us today is just create space in your life to put more light, to really be able to reflect. That's why Lent is called the reflection time, to be able to reflect God's light even more in us. And so that takes us to this wonderful gospel story. Martin Luther even described it as like a preview to what is coming for us. So imagine you're watching a movie trailer. You know, you always have to look that little trailer to see, do I really want to go to this movie? Well, this is transfiguration. Do you really want to be the child of God? Because I'll tell you, you will not be disappointed. This is the best story. It's the best Valentine gift you could ever receive because God so loved us. This is where our gospel takes us today. You see, Jesus had taken all of the disciples with him to Caesarea Philippi. And he's asking them, after he has fed all the multitudes of people, who do the people say I am? And the disciples come up with names. Uh, they say, you might be the Elijah. Maybe you're John the Baptist. Maybe you're a prophet. You see, the people weren't sure who Jesus was yet. And then Jesus asked the disciple this question. Who do you say that I am? And Jesus asked each and every one of us this question. Who do you say that I am? Well, you know, Peter, he always is the first one to talk. And he goes, well, you are the Messiah. And Jesus, ah, oh, they're getting it. They're starting to understand. And Jesus goes on and says, the Son of Man, the Son of God, will suffer greatly. He will be turned on by the chief priest and the scribes, and he will be killed but he will rise again on the third day. Well, here's Peter. Who wants to hear that? He loves Jesus. Jesus is his friend. And he says, no. And we all know what Jesus' response is to that. In that word rebuked that's in our Bibles, it means Jesus turned around sternly and looked at Peter and said, Satan, get behind me. And we see this over and over with Jesus teaching us that we cannot look at Jesus' life in the human eyes. Jesus says this is divine thinking. It's God's world, the kingdom culture that I want you to see. And it does require the Son of Man to die, only to be raised on the third day. But, you know, we have the beauty of knowing the resurrection story. What would you have thought if you were Peter and the disciples? Would you have gotten it? Would you have understood it? God always gives us everything we need, and so he provides this moment. Jesus takes three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, and they walk up this big mountain. Now, that's not unusual for Jesus to do this. 
and Jesus goes to pray. We see this in all the other gospel stories that tell us about the transfiguration, and we put it all together to see the big picture. While Jesus is praying, what naturally happens to the disciples? They get tired, and they're a little sleepy. Then all of a sudden, there is this biggest white light that you could not even imagine. As I was driving in today with that light on the snow, oh my goodness, that hurts your eyes to look at it. It's even brighter than that. And the disciples, they're terrified. Peter, James, and John are looking there, and not only is Jesus glowing this brightly, there with him is Moses and Elijah. And they're talking. Put yourself in the disciples' place. What would you have been thinking? And they're talking about the departing of this world. Now that is really important. That's found in Luke 9. And this week in seminary, we spend a lot of time on the transfiguration. As you can tell, I'm pretty excited to tell you this story. Because there is Moses and Elijah talking to Jesus And we know about Moses, and sometimes we always refer to the transfiguration as Moses being the law and Elijah being the prophets. And they're talking to Jesus, the Savior. But there's a lot in common with all three of those people right now. Moses, you know, yes, he was on the mountaintop when he got the Ten Commandments, and when he walked down those that mountaintop to the people, his face was glowing so bright, people couldn't look at him. Do you remember that? He had seen God. And no one knows where Moses is buried. Dr. Corey Driver is my professor. He's the Jewish uh, person who lived over in the Holy Land for most of his life and has come back to be a Lutheran pastor and a wonderful professor. And if you have living Lutheran, you can always see his commentaries. They're worth seeing because when you see God through his eyes, you see that great love of God. You know, Moses didn't get to cross into the holy, the promised land, but God loved Moses. And it says in Deuteronomy 34 verses 5 through 6 in the Hebrew translation that God commanded Moses to die by his mouth. And Dr. Driver described this as God giving a holy kiss to Moses to just put him to sleep, but to be living always with the God, with our Lord. And Elijah, in our first lesson today, you see that he was brought up in a whirlwind. Moses never, or Elijah never really died. And here is Jesus who is talking to these two people. And Jesus dies on the cross, but is resurrected. And that is the message for us. When we see Moses and Elijah, they were humans. Jesus is human fully, human fully divine. That's what we see, that the promise is for us to look like that when we are resurrected in Christ. That is the transformation of our bodies. That's when you stand at the gravesite and you know with all certainty of that resurrection power that is given to you at your baptism, that this is the promise of Jesus Christ to you. And that is the great gift. Now again, Peter is sitting there and he doesn't know what to say. He goes, well, let us build three dwellings, one for Moses, one for Jesus, one for Elijah, and Nothing is even said, and a cloud encompasses them. And God speaks, this is my son, my beloved, who listen to him. Listen to him. Those words speak to us today. Listen to what God is saying. All along in the Old Testament, even in our lives, we're expecting a Savior to save us from all the brokenness of this world, thinking that this world can be saved, but it's filled with sin. God takes us to his holy kingdom, 
That is the kingdom culture we are resurrected in, where there is no problems, there is no more worries, there is no more pain. That is where our Lenten walk leads us to that promise. And who doesn't want to know that? And who do you want to tell that to? You see, that is what Lent is all about. It's us being intentionally focused on sharing that light, of living that light. This week I thought about the Good Hope family and the season of light, and I thought of our stained glass windows project, which I've heard a lot about. And I thought, you got it right. That wonderful light that shines in in God's house is important to us. In the, the year of the darkness of the pandemic and everything else we experienced, Good Hope was able to almost pay off what they owe on the stained glass windows. Is that commitment? Is that hope? Is that trusting in God? That's a wonderful t- faith testimony. We're going to celebrate having an annual meeting together as a family, thinking of how can we move forward? How can we together share the great news of Jesus Christ? We are on holy ground everywhere we go because we're children of God with this promise of resurrection and life forever. And that's how we walk to this cross and celebrate the resurrection every day of our life. It's good, Lord, to be here. Enjoy this season of Lent. Intentionally live it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the gospel proclaimed in word and deed, for communities of faith far and near, and for all who show the face of Christ throughout the world. For creation, sun, moon, and stars, life forming in the dark earth and ocean deep, mountains, clouds, and storms, and creatures seen and unseen, and for the Holy Spirit's guidance in our stewardship of God's creation. For those responsible for safety and protection, for emergency responders and security guards, attorneys and advocates, civil servants and leaders of governments, that they witness to mercy and justice throughout the world. For all who suffer this day, especially Mary Ann McAllister, Reg Kimmerline, Keith Albright, Jeff Mullins, Melody Reed, and Keith Young. That Christ, our healer, transforms sickness into health, loneliness into companionship, bereavement into consolation, and suffering into peace. For companions on life's journey in this worshiping community, for loved ones who cannot be with us this day, and for guidance during struggles we face, that God's glory is revealed around and among us. Also, please remember the family and friends of Virginia Schultz. We give thanks for the birth of Madeline Marie Schiffer, granddaughter of Mike and Joyce Schiffer on February 10th, and that she is breathing well on her own. And thanksgiving for the faith, faithful departed who now rest from their earthly pilgrimage, especially missionaries Cyril and Matthias, that their lives of service and prayer inspire us in our living. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. We are an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. Alleluia. Alleluia. The author of Ecclesiastes writes, For everything there is a reason, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. As a sign of our repentance, we now say farewell to the Alleluia until our rejoicing at the resurrection of the Lord. The peace of Christ be with you always. Share the peace of the Lord. Easter with the faithful saints.
Let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We live in them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The time and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Christ comes to us in the real presence, in, with, and under the bread and wine, to nourish the faith of Christians and the church. The invitation of this sacred meal that spans all time and all space welcomes all believers. Let us pray. May the love of Jesus guard your hearts in Christ. Amen. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Beloved, here is bread, here is wine, here is Jesus. Come and be fed. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sin of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sin of the world grant us peace Beautiful Savior, King of creation, Son of God, and Son of Man. Truly I'd love Thee, truly soul, my joy, my crown. Beautiful Savior, Lord of all nations, Son of God, and Son of of man, glory 